All right, here we're painting some rivets. Laid down some fine line tape. Doesn't matter. You can use cheap stuff or good stuff. Fine line tape. And then you want to go a couple inches beyond that so you don't get any overspray. And you want to spray away from your lines, right on your line to give that feathered edge. That way it's a little darker, close to the tape, and it fades out and away. And then we just peel that off. Since tape is about $8 a roll, I like to reuse it. Fine line, not so much if you want that line crisp. So you wanna, don't want to really reuse your fine line. But what you can do is if you get the more expensive vinyl fine line, uh, you can reuse that a couple times. It's always crisp. But masking tape fine line that's only a couple dollars a roll, one use. And there you have your faded line before we start our rivets. Okay, uh, making your rivets. Rivets can be done with any kind of circle. You can cut out a circle, circles in a row. You can cut out, uh, you can use a hole punch for tiny little rivets. Or my favorite thing to do is go to sign shop and have them um, cut you some rivets. And that's the easiest way. And they don't have to weed it, weed it. So you are going to use the inside of the rivet and the outside of the hole, which is just, it prints up like this. The first time you have it done, um, at the printer, it's going to cost a little more, twenty or thirty dollars. Um, and what you do is you basically, they will um, print the inside and the outside. You peel it off your row of rivets, and we'll save those holes for later. And then we're going to lay down the rivets on our trusty little. I'm laying these down just outside. Actually, let me do this again. Even I have to redo things once in a while. I'm going to lay them down a lot outside because what I'm going to do later is do a little line inside. That will be explained in just a moment after I get this perfectly aligned. You can also use fine line. Okay. See, I want that a little bit away from my shadow. Because I'm going to put another shadow on that other side eventually. First, I'm going to mask this off both sides. And then I'm going to do that. So I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay, here we are. All laid out. We got our rivets. Half an inch apart is what I chose. I had them cut those. And it cost me about $30 to have them put that into the computer and design it. But every time I need another sheet of rivets, um, was that four foot by two foot worth of rivets, um, row by row, cost me about eight to ten dollars each time I go back. Now that it's in the sign shop's computer, save you a ton of money every time you go and do rivets and time versus cutting them yourself. So if you try that, it will be costly. Okay, so now we're all laid out. We got our holes. We just need to find, figure out. Where do you want the light source to come from? So you want to do your highlights. And just for practice sake, we're going to say the light is just coming right from the, from the top of the bike. Therefore, it's going to go over each side and up and over, kind of go with the shape of the bike. So the back side, we're going to just do little half circles. Can you see that? Probably not. Little half circles at the very bottom half. I'm going to change my angle to make sure that you can see this. And then we're just going to go from the back side of, of these. Let me change my angle. Maybe you can see this better. We're going from the back side. Uh, little half circles around the bottom half. And you know... Okay, so now we've got all the black circles on one side done. Darker at the edge, fade toward the middle. And we went just one direction and I'll explain to you later why even though it's not proper lighting, it's better art um, for this particular purpose. And I'll show you in just a minute. Now we're going to do the white highlights. Keep in mind, 
you want it very fine on very keep it very tight white lines because the overspray will get on the black and you don't want to lose too much of your black so here let me make this small little bit so I'm gonna do a little small half circle and then a white highlight right at the edge tip now I don't know if you can see that but let's change a few angles and then a little highlight Now, if you notice, I am using an airbrush with a lid on it. Um, you can do it without a lid. I ha have a few airbrushes where I don't use a lid. But when on top of something like this, you know, you can control it. But what happens is you'll get all the way done and then you'll forget toward the end and you can spill. Now, to avoid accidents, a lid is nice. half circle and then a little highlight. Try to keep it tight. Little half circle and then a little brighter in the middle. Half circle. A little brighter. Okay, we're not done yet. So now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to make the rivets look a little bit more embedded than they already are. So we're going to take the dots that are left from our stencil. Remember, we had the sign shop cut our stencils, um, but not weed them. That means they didn't take out the inside, they didn't take out the outside. We're using both for ourselves. And I just kept the inside. So we're going to take an X-Acto knife. And what I do is I grab the little end, and then you lay it directly on top of your old circle. Take another end, lay it directly on top of your old circle. This can get time consuming, so remember. Oh, see, tricky, tricky, tricky. You gotta get it just, an X-Acto knife seems to be the most accurate, and it's, you're just grabbing it by the tip, and you put it in your circle, Press down with one finger and pull out. Put it in your circle. Press down, pull out. Okay, so now we have our little dots filled in. Now the opposite. I'm going to do, uh, doesn't matter white highlights or shadows first, but uh, we want to do our highlights on the opposite side of our old highlights. So remember that all the highlights are on the bottom here. And now I'm going to do a highlight on the tops. So we're just going to go right off the top. Little half circles. Now that's where the direct sunlight is. Now we're, when we go over the edge, we can make the circles longer, shorter, fatter. But basically, an upward motion. Doesn't matter. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, here all the white highlights are done, or reverse highlights the inside after my little dots are on. Now I'm going to make a fine line. This is going to be the metal lip. The lip of the metal, which will technically be able to see. Now you can shadow the inside of that lip. I'm not going to get too technical. I'm just going to give you an idea of what I'm going to do here. So, this is the opposite direction. I'm going to cover the black plus like an eighth of an inch or however thick you want your lip. So I'm going to do about halfway Halfway down my line here. Now 
And of course you can measure to be more accurate. And I'm kind of down the middle there. Okay, the most accurate way to do that is to lay a line down, a guide line down, the thickness of you want it, and then lay this line down. But I'm not going to get that carried away. Okay, now I'm going to mask off the reverse, cover up, and we're going to highlight everything from here that way. We shadow this way, highlight that way, with a gap in the middle. That Here's a white shot. White highlight. It's okay for some spots to be brighter than others because that's the highlight. That's what highlights do. Now we'll do the black shadow underneath each rivet. There we go. Can you see that? Let me try it from this angle over here. Little half circles underneath without getting in too much on your white. Underneath, put your finger under the blade and pull up. And there we have it. Alright, let me let's take a little closer look at that.